Welcome back. Last episode, we went over the basics of the spine in conjunction with the height of any given creature. In this episode, we'll cover how to appropriately place limbs, as well as understanding how different kinds of skeletal systems connect, and how to recreate them in spore. First, I suppose we should look at the differences in leg numbers and how that affects the skeleton. There are four specific types that I'll go over, two, four, six, and eight-legged creatures. Bear in mind that these are not the only kinds, but probably the most frequent that you'll be trying to replicate. We'll start with the least number of legs, two. Bipedal creatures are probably the easiest to recreate, as you only have to worry about one set. And positioning the limb work after you've attached them is really the hardest part about it. The posture of the legs depends on how many segments you use, and the number of joints affects how the weight of the creature is carried. Posing the joints of your creature is an important step in creating a believable posture. For all creatures, determining the height between the body and the floor is a pain, but for bipeds it's particularly difficult. So remember to check at the end of the process to make sure your creature's legs aren't too short. You'll eventually begin to check continuously as you're creating to see how well it fits the overall proportions and make minor adjustments as you go. Next is quadrupeds. These are probably the most difficult to replicate as there are a wide variety of quadruped types. For example, cats carry their weight differently than lizards do, and as a result, their hips have developed differently. However, you can place limbs on almost all quadrupeds using a very simple guideline. Hips connect at the top of the spine, and shoulders connect at the bottom of the spine. Shoulders and hips only really apply to endoskeletal systems, but knowing how the shoulders are structured can give you very valuable insight when placing arms or front legs on four-legged creatures. Necks and tails are also usually found in endoskeletal systems, and neck and skull attachment can be as simple as knowing that reptiles and amphibian spines connect at the back of the skull, and birds and mammals connect at the base of the skull. Insects and arachnid bodies are a bit more obvious, being separated into three and two connected segments. Tails are simply a continuation of the spine. However, mammal tails typically don't start as wide as the pelvis, like they do with most reptiles. When creating, it may be more beneficial to use limb segments for the neck and tail instead of the spine. More so with the tail than the neck, as necks are usually pretty short and tails can be very long. Smoothing the tail is a technique by which you add a foot to the tail and extend the spine by one segment. This makes the transition between the body and the tail nice and smooth. When looking at hexapods, or insects, simply knowing that they connect to the sides or the bottom of the thorax is usually enough to make it look accurate. Most of the concern past connecting location is how do they bend, or hold up the weight. This can be best described as a person sitting down on the ground. Their legs have to bend up and then back down. It's the same with most insect limbs. Lastly, we have arachnids, which are very similar to insects, but the arachnids have two key differences. First, they connect to the cephalothorax, as they only have two segments instead of three, like the insects. And second, arachnids tend to have at least one more small segment in their legs. Remember that you can adjust the length of the limbs not only by moving them away from the creature, but also adjusting the height of the spine as well. That's it for this episode. There aren't really any useful links I can share at the bottom of this episode. But running an image search on the different skeletons is really as easy as it gets, and you can find loads of inspiration from them as well as hone the accuracy of your creatures. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and remember to check out Salubral's channel for the next episode.